Yo, fog today. Mark that, Ryan, on your calendar. Fog this morning, real heavy. 90 days from now, hit by a storm. Mark it in your books. Okay, so three months from now? Yeah, I got to start planning for that. <laughs> so one, two, three. F Can we just go four or uh, 12 weeks? Sure. I don't know. You're the one four, that yeah. taught me this wife's tale. Five, six, seven, eight. I don't know if Mother nine, Nature 10, has 11. respect for calendars. Dude, July 23rd. Is that an important date? You seem disappointed. That's well, no, no. I'm just saying July 23rd. I had, I was gonna have plans for July 23rd. Fuck, dude. Massive We're, storm though. There must have 90. Let's say uh, now probably 95 days ago, 96 days ago. Mm -hmm. Must have been huge fog in Nebraska. Must have been tornadoes. Nebraska, now. Iowa. Did you see those? Oh things? man, dude. I did get duped by one that was by the end of it clearly an AI generated tornado. Oh, I got duped by one hard, but I did see some ones that were very real. It was devastating. I hope, I mean, I know not everyone is okay, but I hope that the, uh, the amount of life lost is kept to a minimum. Yeah. What, um, how do you know if something is AI duped when it comes to tornado? So I just saw glitches in the editing at the end. Gotcha. I mean, it was pretty fucking, you know what good. to look for. Yeah. It was very convincing. There was some weird camera warping going on. I'm like, that is placed in there artificially. They gotta, um, they gotta start figuring that out if yeah. you actually want to be taken seriously. You yeah, if you, <laughs> if you need, if you want to start your career in AI generation, yeah, get it together. Um, well, it's the same thing with like the whole, in, like the the like Tom Brady's hole in one mm -hmm. when they had the drone flying from behind him, mm -hmm. following the ball. That's I mean, good. It's that's good, good until video. that's not AI. That was somebody that knows what they're doing. Yeah, it's good until like it's tracking like ten feet from the pin, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of see it like. Um, it like feathers out in the back of it. Yeah, it's a yeah, kind of a jam job. But guy did. A, I mean, he did a phenomenal. I job. mean, it fooled millions of people. So, how about you two? What's up? What? What's up? Hey, no, Jake. That's why I think the mood is so high. <laughs> Everyone, Jake, Jake, Jake's he brings pretty good vibes. The only bad vibes he brings is he shows up fifteen minutes late every yeah, time. Yeah, and, and then we always start off sour because we're upset. Correct, correct. I was the late one today. Um, yeah, but it was known that you were going to be late. Yeah, and I, I'm just I'm going to share the news now. It is uh, I've been hiding it for almost nine months. What news? Baby number three. Oh boy! Dang. Baby wow. number three. Here we go. That's me trying to act excited, Woo. even though I, I've you've known, known for months. Uh, here, here's why I say that. God, I, I've been waiting to tell everybody about this news. <laughs> it's been killing you keeping it in, it's right? Been, oh, God. It, you like, did almost spill the beans one time, and I just, stopped you. Just for you all to know that I, I've known for a while now, and I'll make this more about myself than about Tyler's child. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> I see people doing that a lot these days. Yeah, it's real annoying. I hate it. But having of, kids. Yeah. Having no, kids, yeah. People are well, doing it all the time, of, actually. That too. Um, yeah, more so like uh, just telling people indirectly that you knew along okay like oh it's great yeah. i knew before you did yeah. i knew it's kind of what it is yeah trevor knew mm -hmm. um yeah this one didn't do any grand fanfare of announcing um baby's doing a month jesus <laughs> month and a half month yes Mo month and a half five weeks do you do you, do you know the gender <clears throat> another boy baby oh, let's boy. go Three boys. Be, I've that's got. That's crazy. You know what I was thinking about on the way here? I had, so that's why I was late. I had a baby appointment this morning, the final ultrasound. And uh, I got my scramble team locked up, boys. Yes, oh, you do. Yeah. But here's the thing. I'm hoping within my, ne you know, with my next two, I can mix, I can mix a girl. In yeah, there. then you can so have can a drive off women's tees. Yep. Yep. I get a little bit closer than the tee shot. <laughs> yep. But yeah, final child. I'm getting snipped after this one. Are you? Yeah. Before what? you're 30? Yeah. Yeah, dude. You should do it for your 30th. <laughs> no, I, I would. Actually, not a bad idea. I'm, my birthday is always during rifle season. So, I mean, that's a great place to recover. I get a day off for getting my nuts For snipped, sure. So yeah, just, just bring sit a, in the deer stand. Bring a bag of peas with. They'll stay frozen for how, yeah. sure how cold it'll be. And if I shoot a deer, I have an excuse to make someone else drag it out. 100%. Get Grandpa Dave. Get him. Yeah. Lock lock those legs and start dragging. Baby. <laughs> Here you go, old man. And my balls hurt, so you better pull this thing out. <laughs> no, well, congrats to you. Thank congrats you. Congrats to you and the wife. Um, I mean, it's you already got two, but everyone is, I, I would assume, is just as exciting as the last. Yes, and, and they're exciting for different reasons because you start to think like the first one, it's like, holy shit, I'm gonna be a dad, and the second one, like, oh my god, they're gonna be best buddies. Yeah, and this one, it's like. 
we got our teams figured out. It's going to be me and the youngest versus the two the two oldest kids in all of our sporting events from here on out. Yeah. Got to even them out. That's going to be sweet. I mean, you could, you could have tag team matches in the mm-hmm. basement. Yep. And the youngest one's going to win every time because I'm on his team. And I'm not the dad to ever let my kids win. No, I'm not either. I let like, them they, have small success. Like I was playing one-on-one basketball in the garage with my four-year-old the other day. And I let him get let him get it within two. And then I put the hammer down. So <laughs> some false hope. He felt Jesus. good about his comeback and then rejected. Does he get mad when he loses? Um, frustrated, yeah. But we're working on being good sports. Sure. Because I taunt Becca when I beat her at things. And that is rubbed off on him. Okay. So he wins things and then he taunts people. I'm like, ah, shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't have that happen. Um, but yeah, welcome back to the pod, everybody. The new baby episode. What are we, 187? 187. They piped that the wrong f- way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. So. Okay, they cheated on that. They fucked their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. <laughs> what? Uh, we are, uh, before you get into that point, we got to talk about our boy Russell. We are go presen- on. We are presented by Nicolay Law. And you want to talk about being in my good graces. Russell Nicolay gave me tickets to the Vikings draft party. One of the most iconic drafts of all time for the Vikings. It was so much fun. So beside Russell being a top tier lawyer, being a top tier family guy, because the whole family works at Nicolay Law. Mm -hmm. He's just a good dude. He treats us well. Yeah. Not not all sponsors have to do that type of stuff. And he absolutely didn't have to. So I appreciate it, man. I seriously do. Treats us well, treats his clients well, treats his, uh, his co-workers well. Yep. That also, being his family. Shout out to Cassandra, too. Cassandra's the one we work with mostly. And she's a good, good gal. Big fan. Yeah. Not um, uh, not a bad thing to say about Russell. No, seriously. Like, I've, I'm going to be completely honest. We've had some pretty rough relationships with sponsors across the whole You Bet Your Brand before. And these guys are absolutely not it. They're, and I, I truly think they're good people. And I think that if you are ever hurt, you should give them a call. And with us being uh, Midwesterners, if like if naturally we're just nice, we're just nice to people. Yes. I feel like that's just in our blood. Yep. But when like someone else reciprocates that to mm-hmm. another level, it's like you want to do you as like the brand sponsor want to do as much for the sponsoree as possible and vice versa. Um, so it's a good relationship that we have with him. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nicolaylaw.com. Next time you trip on the golf course, see if you can sue him. Yeah, I wonder what <laughs> I wonder what playing a money game with Russell would be like. I don't know. Is, is are we signing paperwork beforehand? Are I, we I think we have to. I think we have to sign contract on the logistics of the game. Uh, speaking of games, I got a whole stack of games for us to teach people this summer. Really? I've been doing a lot of research, waiting for the nice weather. It rains every fucking Wednesday, which is our shoot day. Um, but I got a whole stack of games. I think you'll like them too. Can you give me? A, can you just give me the background on one of the them? List, my guy. Are they current games or are they new games? Um, a little mix of both. Uh, keep talking while I find my list. Um, well, back to the contract thing. It may be a good idea to have your buddies sign contracts before playing a money game. Yeah, especially the spazzy rules ones, or just your friend. That never pays you? Just in general. Do you <laughs> just the one guy yeah. that never pays. Do you guys, you guys get paid every time? Mm, I don't really bet for money, but usually you just go buy dinner or something. You don't really bet? What you do you any I, don't put on, I don't put on golf. I don't bet, Mike. Really? Why? Just a two for 20 at Applebee's, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is exactly what I don't came know, to my mind. Because I'm more focused about my own score that I would rather not have to focus about beating somebody else. I'm well, just that's there, what, that's I'm just there to get fun, better. Though. I just want to, you know, grind until I get good enough that I can beat them and then play them for money. Well, I also think putting yourself in those pressure situations, though, is going to make you better. Yeah, I mean, we still play games. We just don't put money on it. You got You guys are like in the era of doing like stupid, stupid bets. Like uh, if you lose, you got to tee my ball up type of thing like we used to. Sure. Do. Yeah. Once you, you get old and you lose your imagination, you're just like, all right, five bucks a hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What uh, What kind of, like, what, give me an example of what kind of bets you guys do. Um, usually just, what else do for drinks? Like uh, on Saturday, we did two-man best ball for just drinks. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's that's good. That it involves money. It's just mm-hmm. not direct. Yeah. yeah. There's stakes because you were going to buy those drinks regardless yeah. after your round. But it's nice to be like, hey, shit, Ed, I beat you. I would like a whiskey diet, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I mean, uh, I'm, I'm gonna ha- I might have Russell draft me something up. Um, he, he, you know, put me on the clock. You can charge me hourly. Yeah, you know, what we could uh, have should ask, ask him to do draw up official rules to these games so that when people start getting pissed at us in the comments, like those are not the rules. No, then we'd be like, yeah. here's a legal document saying they're the rules. So who looks stupid now? You do. Uh, but four games that I think I'm I'm ready to share because they're a little more common. I'm going to save the, the other ones. Okay. And did you say, are they existing games or are they new games that we've come up with? Uh, so there, it's, it's a mix of both. I didn't come up with any of these. Okay. I've tweaked the rules on a couple to make them better for a video and better for more casual golfers. So you don't have to sit there and do math for an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of them is Rabbit. A rabbit's a pretty common name. Saw that one online the other yep. day. Um, essentially, it's a game of low man on. I think it's it's not loading for me right now. The first, rules. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's the first one in the group to make a birdie. Yes, um, captures the first the one of the day captures a rabbit. Yep. Now that person holds the rabbit until another person in the group gets a birdie, which then sets. The, you can play it one of two ways. Then. The second person gets the birdie, he, they either steal the rabbit from the person or just sets the rabbit free, which makes it available to steal for the next person. Um, and then at the end, the person with the rabbit gets all of the money. And it's a determined however much and what you want to put in there. It doesn't matter. Yes. Um, the way I tweaked that game is I made it pars. <laughs> I did not make it birdies. <laughs> I mean, that's easy. Yeah. Enough. Yep. Um, and I made the rule that if you get a birdie, so pars... You capture the rabbit. Another par. No sets ties the, either. No ties. If, you, if you have I to tie be lone, Tyler, lone ball. Yes. If I tie and Tyler ties, it stays the same yep. wherever it was. So the two rules I changed are the par captures the rabbit and sets the rabbit free. But if you get a birdie and the rabbit isn't free, you still just get it. So the rabbit doesn't need gotcha. to be set free if there's a birdie. Okay. Full transfer. Yes. Full transfer. Um, next, I got left and right. Very similar rules to wolf. Except for the, you have to play with a foursome. The two people furthest to the left after their drives are on a team, and the two people furthest to the right after their drives are on a team. And you keep track individual points the same way you would with Wolf. You determine a winner at the end. Okay. I so like, that. I like could, that one. You could have the two hookers be on the same team the whole day. <laughs> Couple hookers. And the two oh, yeah. slicers be on the same team the whole day. Okay. Or you could have somebody duff one off the tee. And it just rolls a little bit to the right. And then they're stuck with the slice guy for the first time. Or you could have four slicers and the two worst slicers are on a team. Yeah. And you could play it in a sense where like if you wanted to be on somebody's specifics team, uh, you could. And if you're good enough to play a shot, you could purposely slice it or purposely yeah. purposely hook it so you can you got your team. Yep. You want. Yeah. You can get strategic if you're good enough to shape your shots towards the end. You want to cushion a lead, maybe you you purposely try to hit with the better person that's that's to the left or the right. Uh, I just in the then the scoring rules are the exact same as Wolf. Um, you just take let's say you get a a three and I get a four, thirty four is our team score. Okay, um, so on and so forth. Uh, the last one, this not the last one. I need this to load. Nothing is loading for me. It's called Zamboni, um, and I don't remember the rules. But I remembered I really liked the name. Okay, here we go. Zamboni is a two-person putting game. Zamboni is a call is called or applied a one putt. Equals okay, this is Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> we got time. We're just getting started here. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So we're on the green. And we can choose ahead of time if we want it to be all par threes, all par fours, every hole, or have it be called out. So let's say we're doing it called out. You have a long putt. And I'll be like, hey, Ryan, I'm calling Zamboni here. I have five Zambonis in my pocket, and I can okay. call them whenever I want. If you one putt after I call Zamboni on you, I owe you five bucks. If you two putt, it's a wash. If it's three putt, you owe me five bucks. And I get to call that whenever I want. And okay. you, have, you, have, you can set the exact amount of Zambonis you want ahead of time. So let's say you give me three for nine holes. I get three chances to call Zamboni on you. Okay. And so if you're sticking them tight, I'm in trouble. And the ball has to be on the green. It, you yes, cannot has be to putting be on the from the yep. fringe and and call Zamboni. Yep. There are some people that put it within a 20 foot radius. Um, you can set a radius if you want to. Um, but oh, geez, that's a huge radius. Yeah, which just means like, I mean, 
I'm going to try to call Zamboni when you're in your furthest putts, but like, Oh, you can only call Zamboni outside of that radius. No, you, you can only inside. Oh yes. Yes. So sorry. like yep, if, yep. if it's a super long green and you literally have a hundred foot putt, I can't expect you to one. Putt gotcha. That. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> um, so you don't have to do that though. That's just an option. You can set a radius if you want to, you don't have to set a radius. You can set the number of Zambonis you want to call to that person in a, in a round. Um, it's all that just needs to be agreed upon ahead of time. And then you got to be strategic with it. Like if you're sticking them close and I'm holding them in my pocket and we're down to 16, 17 and 18, I got to call all three. And it doesn't matter if you stick those close that yeah. I'm going to owe you 15 mm -hmm. bucks. Pressure putting. Pressure putting. Kind of like, uh, I mean, similar, not similar to three putt poker, but another putting. Yeah, game that's too. why I put it on the list because I enjoy three putt poker so much. I thought Zamboni would be fun. Yeah. Three putt poker is a little bit more um, average golfer friendly mm -hmm. because... I mean, even like like below average golfers, if you're playing three putt poker, they can still two putt for n nothing happening. But with Zamboni, I mean, they could miss a four foot one putt. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, just circumstances. Yep. Uh, and then the final game is most complicated of the four. It's called Six Point Scotch. Uh, it is a 2v2 format with six potential points per hole. Two points for low ball. Two points for low team total. One point for closest to the pin in regulation. Birdie is an extra point for a total of six. Okay. So if a team gets all six points on one hole, it's considered an umbrella, and their score for that hole doubles to a 12. So if your, your team is low ball, low total, closest to the pin, and you get a birdie, then you get 12 points. Okay. And then you keep, you usually play a dollar a point. I like that. And then you keep tally up the points every single hole, and then you pay up at the end. Not not too complicated. Mm -hmm. Too and and I mean, team golf is the best. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Just some new ones. We've never done really anything like those. I guess left and right is closest to anything we've ever played. Uh, but all games that I think I would enjoy, and I think that uh, most of our casual listeners would enjoy as well. I like those. We need to. We should write a book. Um, not in the serious fashion, but yeah, like actually, a book of golf games. I think that'd be kind of fun. Cause then like, you guys don't know what to play. You're arguing mm -hmm. about it ahead of time. You just close your eyes and pick a page and that's the game you're playing that day. That'd be phenomenal. Well, even just like remembering rules and stuff is like so hard. It's yeah. like, okay, like, do you play for points or like, what's the point regulation stuff too? So yeah. You know, that little swing book that grandpa Dave gave me. Yeah. You get, it's about that size. You just get mm -hmm. one of those little guys or maybe, uh, maybe make an app. You can, yeah. you can maybe shuffle the games if 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 yeah. you wanted to. That's a and really good. It's like, hey, what what are we playing today? I don't know. Arguing. All right, shuffle ch, ch, rules. You know. We talked yeah. about Tinder for golfers to find a golf partner. What if you had a Tinder for golf games? You sit there and you argue with your foursome on what game to play. Are we going to play Wolf today? Are we going to play Front Back Total? What are we going to play today? And no one agrees. You've got this app where you swipe left or right on a bunch of your games. And then you and your buddies have matched. So when you walk into your round, you're like, hey, we all matched mm. on, on on Wolf today. Do you guys want to play Wolf? Okay. Here's all the games we all mutually like. And we don't have to sit and have a 10-minute conversation in the parking yeah. lot ahead of time. And then, I mean, you obviously can, like, make your own groups within the app. Like, yep. yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. us four, like, you're not going to be swiping games with Joe Blow five miles away. Right. So, like, the, the inspiration for this came from uh, my wife and I have a baby name app where you just literally swipe left and right on baby names. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard it, of that before. And it tells us if we match on a baby name together. Interesting. And that got our list down instead of me just reading off a list, like, you like this, you like this, you like this, you like this. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's what my wife and I do. Like, She's like, what do you think about this one? Or what do you yeah, think right. about that one? Um, We're on our third kid now, so we don't fucking, we've gone through them Trevor, all. Trevor, times. Trevor, yeah. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. Yeah, now, I, I, now you're on the third best. Yep. For the third best. Our third name. favorite name from the first kid. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. No, I, I like that idea. Because um, with the amount of games out there, it is, it, obviously, like you got your, your playing partners, and, and typically, you know, you'll walk up, play the same exact game, but sometimes that gets to be a little it bit old. It gets old. It gets real old, real fast. Like, I remember the first time I played Wolf, I loved it so much. And by the fourth time I played Wolf, I'm like, we need a new game. 
But it's also it, sometimes it can be hard to sell people on a game. Like when you roll up to the course, mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, you guys want to play three putt poker? Let me sit here for five minutes and explain how you do it. Right. And some people are really bad at explaining games, too. So if they had a chance to read up on it, kind of get the general idea of the rules before you even start playing. Yeah. And then you have the official rule book on your phone. There's no arguing over shit. Yeah. Scoring on there, too. Scoring on there. Oh, yeah. I know there is like... um I don't know. There's like, there's golf betting apps where you and your group or mm -hmm. your buddies can sync transfer and, money back yep, and forth, transfer money back and forth. But in terms of games, I, I don't know if that's, I don't think it's been done yet. No. And there's so, there's so many games out there. You can get as like, as basic as skins or match play all the way to something like Wolf or mm -hmm. I'd say Wolf is probably the most complicated game we play. It's really tough to explain. To it people. is. Yeah. The, the, it's one of those. Uh, you'll, you'll understand it once we start playing. Yeah. After you sit there and poorly explain the rules for the first 15 minutes. And then it's like, let's just start playing. You'll get it. Yeah. I mean, you can even have like a visual of how it works. Mm -hmm. You got four people. They like, could, we could just have a link to all of our videos explaining the games. Boom. And I feel like we've done a pretty good job at explaining them. I think so. Yeah, not too many people complain. The only complaints we ever get are someone's like, well, I play this way, or I, I, I changed the rule to this. And it's like, well, it's fucking subjective. Yeah, and you can change the rules all you want as long as everyone is, is in agreement yep. with them. Um, interesting. I like that. Yeah. There's got to be at least, there's over 50 golf games out there what, that you can play. As resident golf game lover, I have searched high and low for the perfect games for one to play, two for us to do videos on, there are well over 50. What's your guys' favorite game to play? Um, mine would probably be Wolf or just a scramble, like two or four man scramble against other teams. It it is weird. It's like they have there is a hundred games and know. scramble always just feels good. It's always a fun one. Oh, it's the best. It's just yeah. like a team like yep. game. It's just not complicated in nope. any way. High vibes. All reliable. Yep. For sure. I don't really get too spicy with the games. I had I think you should start. Simple. I think you would enjoy them. I'm sure. Yeah, I, you're I, a schemer. I, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, but it, it also like it kind of takes the pressure off of just your individual game, mm -hmm. too. Nothing makes you feel better about your your shitty individual golf game when if you have a teammate that's playing good. Oh my god, mm -hmm. it's the best. Yeah, I mean the amount of times I've just hopped on somebody else's back. Dude, at Craigens last year, remember how shitty I played? Oh yeah, we got second place. Yeah. yeah, I had like four total shots. Like we needed all four of those shots. They definitely helped, but the rest of the day I was just I was there swinging my club for no reason. <laughs> Did you have one good shot? I had several, but that the. Those four that I we used of mine that were good were really good, and then the ninety five other shots I took were ass. Yeah, I mean you're you're going to be the first guy hitting hitting that at every certain spot. Oh yeah, um, yep. That, was, that was that was your role that yeah, day, which is fine. I was, well, then battling the adversity of Jake getting stung by a bee and like oh having you know Epi Pen and what, yeah. whatever else, his face <laughs> swelling up. <laughs> Um, that one's uh, in the past, though. Yep, Jake's okay. He's he's back. He's back to normal. Finally, I think it almost took about eight eight to ten. Almost months. A, almost a full year for Jake <laughs> to recover from that beast thing. Uh, no, I like that idea though. Um, make things a lot easier. It would keep the rounds uh unique and mm -hmm. exciting at the same time. I mean, like a couple of my golf buddies, we just we go and we just play stroke play. See, another and problem. It's, like, it's I don't know. It's it's fun, but at the same time, like, let's just do something different. Right. I think the uh, the reason we end up doing that, this is what happened in the one round I've played in town this year. We got to the first green. We're like, oh, shit. Do you guys want to play a game? Yeah. We just forgot to talk about it. So maybe this app could be like a plug in that you could add it on to your 18 birdies account mm -hmm. or your Grint account. Mm -hmm. So like you pull up a new round like, hey, do you want are you playing a game? Like, yes, I am. Click into it. Shows you the games. And there may be something like this out there, but if we haven't seen it yet, TM, if, TM, 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 TM. Yeah. Um, then, I mean, you just maybe got to do a little bit better job marketing it. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <you> know? <laughs> I don't know. 
I mean, true. Every time I try to come up with something new and original for golf, it fucking exists. So I've been working on this for two years. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> and where the fuck is it? Yeah. Check your Reddit receipts. They're way back there somewhere. Even like the uh, remember that that te- that um, the yardage game that we came up with last year. Yep. Like the you bet the amount of money that the hole is in yards. Mm-hmm. You put the decimal point wherever. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like unlimited uh creativity to come up with golf games yeah yeah and that's so simple and people seem simple. to really like it the video popped the fuck off great it was awesome um yeah and we're not we're like 90 percent sure we invented that game <laughs> mostly ryan ryan came up with 90 percent of it i do believe there were people out, yeah, we've been playing, playing this for years it's like okay well you're just like there, there really how, wasn't how much of that though how, it was mostly people just suggesting name ideas because we didn't sure. know what to name it yeah but if the general public doesn't know about a good golf game, then I think it's just a, a disservice to the golf world. I think we found our purpose. Golf games. Informing the general public on the rules of specific golf games. <laughs> There's a lot of discrepancies out there. Yeah, It's like, hey, if you don't know the rules of Monopoly or Yahtzee, you're not going to open up the uh, the little single ply rules book and try and figure out what this rule mm-hmm. is. So video formats way better. Hell yeah. We got to get out. We got to try all these games. I think that's the one thing that I lack on is like we do these games. We come up with them. I think they're great. And then we get to the course and I end up just playing the regular ass games I always play instead of mixing it up. Yep. Got to get the buddies on on board. I got to get that swipe. What do we call it? (laughs) What did we call it? We call it the Tinder for golfers swinger. Swinger. What's this? I got the URL. Tinder for golf games. You have, the, you have the URL for Swinger? Swinger Golf. No. <laughs> Golfopoly. Yeah. S-W-N-G-R golf.com. Yeah. Wrong crowd headed to that. Just country club <laughs> swingers. Yeah, waiting for someone to buy it. Yeah. Um, we'll come up with a name. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll workshop it. But someone's already got it in the works. They've been working on it for a couple of years already. <laughs> and it's just a bunch of bullshit. Uh, whatever. So anything else on that? No, I think we're good on that. <laughs> okay. Um, I had to share this with you guys because I've tried. I mean, I've tried to share with uh, one or two other people, and they just don't seem interested. You guys probably won't be interested either, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, <laughs> is it a new swing revelation? Oh, not, God, no, 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 God, no. Um, then I might be interested. One of the biggest thrift store finds this last weekend. Okay, Ooh. I'm intrigued. I'm a thrift store guy that I did not find, <sighs> but my wife did. Okay. And she did not go ahead and buy it without no. asking me first. So she goes to the thrift store and she comes home. And she goes, oh, man, that new thrift store down in South, South Fargo is awesome. It's like super big and it doesn't smell in there yet. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's great. And she goes, check out this golf bag that was sitting there for like 50 bucks. She shows me it's a it's like an old school leather white ping bag Mm -hmm. that is I mean, these are selling online for like one fifty to two hundred dollars. And I look at her, I said, can you send me that picture? So she sends it to me (laughs) and I go, why did you not call me right away to buy this thing? You already have a golf bag. And she, but Ryan's a flipper. <laughs> I'm a flipper though. And also like, it's just cool to have another golf bag. Um, and she goes, well, yeah, I, yeah, I, did, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why. And you immediately got in the and truck. And I'm like, no, because this, it was like eight o'clock at night when she no. told me it was a Saturday and then Sunday they're closed. So I get there Monday morning at 9 a.m. <laughs> when they open. I'm actually sitting in the parking lot at 845 and I'm like, well, shit, I'm going to be here for another 15 minutes. I'm going to go get gas quick. Came back, got back at 858. First one to walk in the door, straight to the golf section, gone. No. An employee snagged that for sure then. Yeah, I mean, it was sitting If your out. wife was there late, nobody snuck in No, she was, she was there Saturday afternoon. Okay, and you mm-hmm. found out about it late. And I found out about it late. Mm. So, um, Somebody she, else is going to make $100 on that bag. <sighs> and it's not you. And not even that I would want to get rid of it. It was a sweet enough bag to where I probably would have kept it. Huh. And I don't even swing ping, ping clubs. I have a really old set of pings you could just have to put, just in, put there. Them in there. Yeah. For aesthetic purposes. Yep. So I have yet to have like a big thrift store find. And that would have been 
I mean, for me, big, you know, if you flip it for a hundred bucks or whatever, that yeah, would have been you, a big one. You got a little scratch though. Like you, I did. You, you scratched the itch just a teeny tiny bit, just knowing it was there. I did. Now you know that it's possible here. Yes, I did. Um, I told her next time if you see something worthy <laughs> like that, I need you to call me. <laughs> How right is away. she supposed to know? Well, she was, she, she knew well enough to yeah. show me that the photo of that golf bag. That's fair. Did you look after you went there? Anything good? I did. I, I spent 20 minutes looking around. Came out with nothing. No golf stuff. Son of no golf bitch, stuff. No, nope. a lot of old clubs. I mean, if you're just getting into golf, like there's full sets of clubs mm -hmm. and bags and balls and everything at the thrift store. Like, I don't really see that as being a huge issue. No, me. Yeah, we've been saying it for years. Thrift store clubs, garage sale clubs. Yeah. If you just want to have a set to just smack balls and drink beer. Great get, set to do have. that. 20 bucks, 30 bucks, yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, I've been on a stacked golf grind lately. Oh, yeah. I told you guys that last week. You guys ever watched mm -hmm. Stacked Golf? Yeah. Uh, gar garage sailors, thrift stores, flea market. Um, and that would like that was that was the closest I would have been to to my uh, my team over at Stacked Golf. Missed opportunity. Well, guess what? Rummage sale season is here too. So I now know. you're gonna have thrift stores, garage sales. You're gonna be all over the place. Okay, so what when it comes to rummage sales, I I've really never went or okay, so here my thing about rummage sales is I feel just I just feel a little too awkward walking up to someone's rummage sale, walking around and then leaving with nothing. I don't give a shit. Why, well, yeah, I get that. Why do I feel like that? I don't know. Cuz you're sifting through somebody's stuff saying, "Yeah, I'm not good, good enough." Yeah. Sure. Okay. I mean, my thought process is are you ever going to see that homeowner ever again in your entire life? Probably, probably not. not. No. Oh, well, fuck them. They're probably good people, but like, why do their opinion doesn't matter? You're okay. never going to see them again. I don't want your shit to be my shit now. So yeah. No. So what, like, what's the game plan when you're looking for a garage sale to find golf equipment? Like, how do you find a good one? that is worth your time to maybe go check out. Okay, so it's typically old people and the really sneaky good finds, I mean, as sad as it is, it's usually when old man dies and the wife is selling his stuff. Mm -hmm. And you find some really cool old clubs that were his or you have an old dude that's a collector that's getting rid of a ton of shit. Like that dude that we bought our clubs for the rummage sale video for. Yeah. Yep. He had tons of clubs. And he was talk because he talked our freaking ear off for 45 minutes. Great guy. He was a good guy, but man, <laughs> he's just an auctioneer in another life. Um, he collected those clubs over the years because he worked at various golf courses, just pick them up at thrift stores. He was sure. just collecting clubs and then decided to get rid of them all. So those are the two things to look at. Look for old people and look for an old guy just kind of hovering. Now, the golf stuff's usually, is it usually in the driveway or do they stash it away in the garage? Usually in the driveway. They got the bags set out. They'll have stands right out there. They're very rare. It's in the garage. Okay. When I had mine, I had it out there and I sold a shitload of golf balls. Okay. Um, how about location wise? Should you be searching by golf courses or you should, I mean, I think the biggest one is you should probably just be in like more ritzy areas. Uh, yeah, I would say old people neighborhoods. I mean, truly you're guys like us for the most part, aren't getting rid of their clubs at right. rummage. So we're selling them online. We're selling them to buddies because we understand how technology works and we can get more money for it that way. So you just got to go to old people neighborhoods. Okay. I would also feel weird walking around looking through people's stuff with my eBay app open. <laughs> they can't. And they're like, not looking Trying at your to phone. search as fast as possible just so I can figure out the value and then move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. well, that's why you just go look it up in your car. Yeah, and I, I also don't want to be stuck with like five different sets of golf clubs or five different bags or whatever think there's value and there's not so i mean there there's that's definitely part of the fun behind. then you go have your own garage sale and sell them to other people profit's not as high but yes you could do that yeah i'm i i am also for some reason um i'm very anti-garage sale for myself like i i don't want to i don't want to have to have a garage sale. You no know, garage sales are gonna die by the time we're old our generation does not. I'm one of the very few that likes garage sales and will host their own. Like our generation is that they're not doing that. I mean, you have Facebook Marketplace. People sell on Instagram, yeah. Snapchat. It's literally anything you can sell on. Yeah. 
You don't think people are going to be having garage sales in in twenty years? years? No, nope. I really, I really don't. The the less human connection, the better for them. I mean, look at the restaurants and like fast food that are have all online ordering now. And I think that's why I like eBay way more than Facebook Marketplace because mm-hmm. you're not getting. Is this available? Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. That's why it's still listed. Yeah, like human contact is getting eliminated rapidly. Sure. So rummage sales will die in 20 years. So you got to take advantage of them now, Ryan. And I mean, that might be the growth of thrift stores as well. Because like if you're yeah. not going to have rummage sales, like you just you'd rather just donate it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Could have some big fines. Yeah. So if you guys are on the market, you got 20 years. That's it. And then no more rummage sales. 20 years to start just collecting shit at your house. Mm-hmm. And then then you're screwed. And you can sling it on whatever eBay is in 20 years. Interesting. Okay. Take a break. Take a break. All right, we're back. Um, before we get into the next, this next segment, um, I mean, huge news in the golf world, obviously, the golf apparel world. Um, Sunday Red drops today, actually. It's not dropping on a Sunday. This brand, dude. This brand. It's a good point. Every it's a good point. fucking time I hear something about this brand, I'm further and further out. I, I couldn't it's, have been, that's a great point. I couldn't have been more in when I found out Tiger was getting his own brand. And then the more I learn about it, I don't like the logo that much. Um, there was, the attention to detail and the promo picks were bad. And now they're not launching Sunday Red on a Sunday. Terrible it's, marketing. What maybe, is going on? Maybe that's, they released that, you know, like they released everything and then took a couple months to, you know, take the comments into consideration. Mm-hmm. And Which I'm sure they did. To work on things a little bit better. But uh, I'm... I, I think I'm subscribed to every email list they have, <laughs> every exclusive drop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be one of the first ones to buy it. Are you? Yeah. Oh yeah. You gonna drop three hundred dollars on a polo? I don't know. We don't know how much they cost. Yeah, because they're they don't want people to run run to the hills when they see that. It's gonna it's, be eighty five guaranteed. At least yeah. that's low. I think. Mm-hmm. I I genuinely think it's gonna come in on probably like one twenty a polo. It's <laughs> definitely not gonna be like Shaquille O'Neal shoes back in the day that that he, like Walmart's had stock mm-hmm. for tw- yep. 20, 25 bucks. Um, it's going to be very exclusive so that not everyone can get their hands on mm-hmm. it because the price point is so high. Yeah. Um, but I will. I, I would I would buy a hundred dollar polo um, just to say I just to say I had it now just to say like to who I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but if that ever it's like it's like keeping something from when you were younger be like oh, I want to show my kids this one day. It's mm-hmm. like they're probably not going to care. And you might show them one time. So you held like, on to it oh, for 30 really years. Really cool, dad. Every yeah, time Ryan cool. plays, as, plays as a solo, he's going to wear it. Hey, guys, look at my sick polo. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not going to wear it. I'm keeping it. Fu- I'm keeping it in the wrap. You're not no going to wear shot. it? Probably not. Well, I get it then. I don't know. You're so I can wear tell it. my kids when they're older that I was one of the first to buy it. I mean, no. packaged first off the line. I would wear Sunday it. Sunday red. Maybe polo. I'll buy two. Maybe I'll buy two and then get rid of one of them. So the other one's essentially uh, won't be free. Well, it depends on how much you can resell. For I it. think you should buy all of them and then resell. Uh, to say <clears throat> I haven't considered it. The resale BMI? market on these are going to be huge. Exactly. It's are they be only like, making so many or what are they I doing? would think so. No idea. I would think so. Again, it goes with the exclusivity. So I mean, people do it with Jordans all the time. Yeah. And we've made the Jordan Tiger comparison many times in this podcast. I have a feeling it's going to end up the same situation. There's probably going to be a lot of bots that are going to be buying oh, stuff, yeah. which kind of oh, sucks. Yeah. You better set yours up. I don't know how. <laughs> Me either. I'm, I'm a one-man show. Set here. your profile, get your card in there, mailing address. and well, then I'm one-man band. No. Let's see what I can do. Um, so that, that I mean, that's that's I, I want to say it's live. I don't know what time it goes live. I got to do my research, but um, this comes out Wednesday, so it's it's out there. All right. If there's any left in stock, Wednesday red. Um, okay, I I'd come across this uh, this question um, or this topic on Reddit last week. Okay. Um, and it is advantages that pros get that we do not. Mm. And there are a lot of them. Yes. Yes. Now, I mean, right off the bat, unlimited money for lessons. <laughs> like these guys, they're getting a ton per, of money. Per, like, like, like the person who gives them lessons is employed by this yes. guy, basically. Private coaches. Private coaches mm-hmm. who, who probably work with just that golfer or maybe one or two other golfers. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the most legendary 
coaches of all time. Yeah, I mean, we should we just rattle off the obvious ones real sure. quick? I don't. Hopefully, I don't take any off of your guys' lists. Uh, someone that tells you what club to hit. A caddy. The a caddy. caddy. Yeah, someone um, to carry your bag for you. The caddy does. Uh, the caddy probably takes a majority of these off the list. Yeah. I so, mean, yes, someone who carries your bag, mm -hmm. uh, someone who tells you exactly what club to hit. Now, they're going to be they're going to be wrong a small percentage of the time. But to not have to deal with that. Well, they're scouting the course for you, too. Exactly. And it's not like you, know, you ain't going to pull 18 birdies out of your out of your pocket on your cell phone and check right. your distance for you. They yep. have that all mapped out. Well, I mean, then they have the ball spotters. You hit one into the long shit on the side, on the rough. Someone knows where your ball is immediately. I think if if we were to implement one thing that the pros get that we don't, it would be I, I would like to see the the ball hawkers. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Someone who is like two hundred to three hundred <sighs> yards off the tee box, someone to track your ball to mark it with a flag. I like. I wonder how many times you've hit. I've hit a ball that should be in play. I just cannot mm -hmm. find it. Well, we we're pretty generous when like. It's clear and obvious you should be able to find that ball. We we typically give like, hey, you can free drop. Yeah, yeah, no, you know? that's, that's it's good etiquette. Um, but like, remember we we had spotters at the Pine of Palm. It was yep. great. There was a couple holes where I for awesome. sure would have been searching for way longer. And, and it's like it affects pace of play. Like I'm gonna abandon a ball much faster than a pro would because I got a group on my ass trying to move forward. For sure. Get it. Get like a 14, 15 year old kid out there. Yeah, that's pay, pay him twelve bucks an hour. Granny, you know, you probably got to you know, take a cell phone away or yep. lock it up before he goes <laughs> yeah. out there because he ain't going to be watching for balls, but throw a helmet on him and let <laughs> him Helmet and there. chair, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. fuck that. Some be, body I mean, armor. Yeah. It'd be awesome as a kid. Oh, yeah. I think those the kids of the Pine of Palm get like, they get paid for X amount of hours a day or something. Well, and then I'm sure there's going to be some generosity of the golfers like tipping these kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Drunk dudes tipping those. Like, hey, thanks for, for finding sure. my ball. Yeah. I'd tip them ahead of time be like, hey. I'm for sure going to spray one over here. You want to drop this for me? Yeah. Hey, this is... Here's uh, one ball. This is what I'm playing right yeah, now. Here's one ball wrapped in a $20 bill. Yeah. yeah. I need this to be just off the fairway. Yeah. Please. How it got there, I don't know. Tell everybody it bounced off a tree. Cart path, tree, first cut off the fairway. Yep. That's a 400-yard drive thanks to you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, one of them that I think is not obvious, uh, pros don't have any pressure at all to play fast. No. Yeah. The, the groups behind them are not pressuring them. They are there. They can take their time. Like Patrick Cantlay is a prime example. Like, yeah, he's got the internet on his ass, but no one at the tournament's like, hurry the fuck up. Do they even implement? Is there, is the timing, is the time rule, is it two minutes from when you like approach it to when you need a hit? Yeah. Mm. But like you could sit back and you're waiting forever. Like, I, I just, I just don't see any real pressure for them to have to get a move on, you know? For sure. Yeah. And that would be sweet. Like I've had it before where I'm playing super early mornings. There's no groups behind me. And it is really, really nice. It's awesome. To just, you can putz around. You can take a good look at your shot. You can play two balls. You can, you can sit there and you can change your song if you want to. Like there's just no pressure to get your ass moving. Yeah. And I think that's a huge advantage, at least mentally. For sure. That oh nobody's God, yeah. barking at you. Especially yeah. on par fives when you're like on your second shot, you're like, okay, well, do I wait for the green to clear, hit mm -hmm. it? Or do I just lay up? And you wait for it to clear your top and you go, well, I could have just fucking yep. laid up. Right. Yep. Right. You're, so. just, you're on your own time as a mm -hmm. professional. And I yes, you're right. There is clock rules and whatnot, but they're pretty generous. I've seen it implemented like what, twice ever? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely not like the uh, the MLB that has implemented the pitch clock. Yeah. It couldn't be farther from the pitch clock. Yeah. I mean, there there's a, like there's a I feel like there's a mental clock with the rules committee, but they're not going to they're not going to probably get anyone on it. yeah unless it's egregious like the one the few times i've seen it implemented are when people are waiting for a putt on the lip yeah and i mean that's that's 10 seconds i think it is yeah which is tough i don't like that rule let mm -hmm. the thing drop yeah no, i'm with you what do you guys got um i got they get guaranteed tea times which is really hard nowadays <laughs> yeah. it's fucking awesome i mean i just looked for one tomorrow at a course and there's nothing God, that is sweet. No tea time black market you in a professional golf game. It's insane. And also with that free range, you literally just get whatever you want. That's a good point. Free range balls. I want to say someone on Reddit the other day said that they went to a course that was charging like 20 bucks for a bu bucket of range. Jesus oh. Christ. And uh, like we're, we're creeping up on 
like cart costs. Yeah. Of like, you know, last summer I was paying 24 bucks a cart, which is insane. We talked about, we remember we made a guess on how much driving ranges make in a summer. I think it was a and stupid we put, amount. And we put it at like seven fifty for a bucket. Yeah. Imagine paying a, what a course is making God. at 20 I mean, how many people are paying for that? I'm, I go and I see $20 for a bucket of balls. I'm absolutely not hitting balls. I'm yeah. just going to run to the fucking uh, whatever just random garage sale, grab a shit bucket yeah, of balls, the used, and then hit those yeah. balls there. I don't care. Go to the used bucket, hit 10 balls instead. Yeah. It's actually not a bad idea. Bring your own balls. Not a bad idea at all, actually. Uh, Noah, you got anything? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think constant access to top tier equipment. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean, everyday Joe's like, like me. I mean, I'm not getting a new set of irons every summer. I'm, you know, I'm secondhand shopping. Yeah. You're um, not 3d printing your clubs. You're no. not, uh, <laughs> maybe requesting an extra layer of tape underneath your grip, make them a little fatter, uh, or vice versa. Um, you're not getting like weight distribution changed on the head of your club. Uh, we're probably just not even changing the degree of like our driver or anything like that. Um, brand new balls every round, not playing with scuffed up whatever ones. Yep. Balls that you found that in the (laughs) woods that have been sitting there for two and a half years. Uh, the list goes on and on. I mean, so I'm with you on that. Yeah, the, you, it's really hard to blame it on your clubs when you're hitting top of the line shit every single time. So like that, yes, that also yes. takes a level of frustration for them as well. They that can't blame anything on their equipment. That yeah. is very true. Custom fit to you, you got no excuses. Yep, it's in the back of their head. They're like, I'm swinging the best possible club for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like there are times where like my six iron's not on today. Oh, do these six, do these irons actually even fit me? Is it, what's going on? Uh, you think about that type of stuff. Not those guys. No, God, Peace no. of mind for them. Unless you're Bryson and you want to bitch about your driver that they custom made for you. And granted, like these guys have earned, they've earned all of these uh, like accessibilities and advantages because they're just really fucking yeah. good at golf. Yeah, and like none of these things, I'm being like, oh, we should get this too. I'm, it's bullshit we don't get it. I understand why we don't have it. Um, but uh, but yeah, it is, it's, it's interesting. And it makes a little more sense like how much better they are when you break all this stuff down. And I know they had to practice to get to this level and earn these advantages, but it like, it makes sense a little bit more once you think about all these things actually. Yeah. This is a side question, not related to what we're talking about. In terms of pace of play, do you think a course switching to all riding would be faster than having the split between riding and walking or a course switch into all walking being, uh, you know, so you can't have the split between carts and walking. You just have to go all walking. There's no carts available. Like what, which one would make pace of play faster? Because the advantage to walking is that everyone can disperse to their own balls Mm -hmm. separately. Yeah. And then that's why I, I think walking would be significantly faster. But obviously the carts, you can drive faster than you can walk. Yep. But you're still also, you got to take the cart paths, which are a lot longer than walking directly from, think about, let's go hole two at Osgood. The cart path driving all the way around to hole three takes Mm -hmm. way longer than walking from hole two's green to hole three's tee box. Yeah. And you can, you, I mean, you can't park your cart, your golf cart right next to the Mm -hmm. green where you can put. You can put your push cart, you know, five, 10 yards off. Yeah, I think I think push carts are the fastest method of golf, hands down. And you also think about, and I know for the sake of the question, this is, isn't really helpful, but yet less people filling up the tee times if it's walking only. Less people are going to golf. That is true. Tee times are, could be more widely spaced out. Did we just, I mean, did we just find the solution to uh, pace of play? Two huge questions we've been yeah. talking about. Yeah speeding up pace of play and black market tea times mm-hmm. lack of tea times make it walking only that would I guess our I'm, fans would riot though if golf yeah. courses became rock walking only like maybe we riot when it's car path only with a golf yeah cart. yep car path only but oh, that's that interesting sucks. i've never really thought about that if if a cart switched to only walking 
just based off of logic, you'd think it would speed things up and you'd think that more tee times would be open. It Probably makes not. complete sense. Yeah, I think the carts slow things down big time. Because, I mean, if you and me are in a cart, you slice yours right, I hook mine left. We have to go to yours, go find it, mm -hmm. then go all the way back to mine, find it, and hit it. Or you go and drop Ryan off, mm -hmm. and then you drive over to yours, and then Ryan's walking anyway. Yeah, and again, you, you can your push cart can go right off the green where mm -hmm. your cart has has to go maybe 30 yards off the green because of the cart path. Yeah, or and then you also you drive it around so it's close for when you walk off, and then that's a big walk back, and it's extra time in the cart. I, I truly think that golf carts slow, slow the game down. Interesting. I think so, too. Uh, I'm, I'm with you guys. Yeah, so we're a walking-only podcast, right, guys? Yes, sir. I would be a, I would I would be walking only if everybody else is walking only. Mm. I I think I'm I'm gonna. I think it's to, all or one, all, all or nothing for me. I'm gonna try to walk as much as possible this summer. That's good exercise. Yeah, Same. it is. Yeah. Huh. There you go. I wonder think what about I all, wonder what people will say about about this. I think they will agree. To be honest, I mean, the. It's way nicer and more convenient and more comfortable to ride in a cart. But you, there's no one that can prove to me that riding in a cart makes the game faster because I've done both lots and lots of times and the cart's slower. So, I mean, then if, if a cart doesn't have to, you know... And with a foursome. We'll, we'll leave it a foursome sure. for sure. If it's a solo in a cart, he's zooming. He's, he's the fastest gone, one. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, that could be one stipulation too. Oh, he... he Here's the thing now. Courses carry left less golf carts. Mm -hmm. um, there's less overhead in the golf carts. You don't mm -hmm. have to like, um, I don't know, you don't have to have a guy tuning them up or swap out your inventory for newer ones or fix the technology in the screen up front or whatever. Um, I wonder, is there any walking only courses out there? Like that's not, that's not a par three course. They have oh, carts. Never mind. They do? Yep, they have carts. I think they have like two carts, don't they? They have or? a few, just like the older people that go there. Sure. And get gotcha. some. It is, yeah, it is kind of like hilly up and down. But for the most part, it is a walking course. Yeah. Mind you, there also is like six people at a tee box at one time. So it's also <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, pick your battle. But no, I, I'm kind I'm almost completely against carts because spending $30 for a cart is just like, it's, it, yeah, it's for what? It's absurd. Every two round I've played so far, I've just walked. Day by day. Yep. Day by day, I am slowly migrating. We're turning you, dude. We're turning you. It's just, it's all logic. I mean, yep. if there's logical solutions to these to these questions, I I'm I'm open ears. Hell you, yeah! You got a nice push cart too, so why wouldn't you? Do you do have a nice push cart. I do. So Costco. <laughs> great push sell carts. it. Um, I know a guy. You? Yeah. Sure. Four hundred dollars. Nope. Well, unless you want a new one, you can just bring it to Costco and you get yourself a new one. They're like one hundred and fifty. They're not one hundred fifty bucks. They're not that expensive, really. Really? For what push carts cost these days? What, the, what everything costs these days? The inflation's just kicking in. Yeah, kick, um, kicking ass. I got a couple more advantages pros get that we don't. Um, this one's kind of obscure, but I've actually seen it benefit the pros before. The gallery being on the sidelines in the rough. If you hit it into them, they're saving your shot. For sure. Mm -hmm. Like Smoke if I, with the arm. Yeah, you bounce it off a patron. <laughs> that saved your ball from rolling another 30 yards into the shit. For sure. Like if I hit that same shot, that ball's gone. Yep. But because Phil Mickelson bounces it off your chin, he's still in play and he's got a pretty decent shot. Yeah. And it only costs you a, um, an autographed ball and maybe like a $20 bill. Yeah. Seriously. Like I I know it's it sounds bad, but they quite literally have the bumpers up like bowling yeah and it's just a human meat shield but it does the same thing so unless they hit it really bad and it goes over the crowd which is rare for a pro the fans bodies are going to keep this shit in play or even the stands too they have it yeah bleachers like and that's like that's not a man-made ob no it, it is a man-made object so it's considered like how do they consider stands like you get a free drop yep. away from them mm -hmm. if it impedes your club. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yep. 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 Yeah. So like sixteen at the waste management. If your ball is laying resting up against the wall, you get to move your ball mm -hmm. for free. Yeah. For free. So it's weird to think about, but the gallery is actually a huge advantage for golfers. Like 
What was it this weekend? A fan got confused, like panicked Saw when a ball that. was coming oh, up. He and he caught went, it. Caught it. Yeah. Caught it. And he's like, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. And then dropped it. And that ball would have gone 40 more yards. It would hit the cart path. It hit the cart like path. The sidewalk. Yeah. And just been gone. And this kid just like, ah, I'm going to catch it. Because he just panicked. I mean, I get it. You don't know what you're going to do when you got a golf ball hurtling at you. Yeah. But he picked it up and then he's like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. And then just dropped it there. Great lie. Phenomenal lie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, he didn't even need to take a cup. Well, what was it? Who was it from Good Good? Garrett Clark smoked that fucking fan. That ball was in the water if that f- it didn't <laughs> hit, oh, kill God, that yeah. fan. That was tough. Yeah. Fan died. No, he didn't. No. He, didn't he didn't die. He was fine. <laughs> yeah. Good sport about it, too. Yep. Uh, but yeah, something you don't think about every day. Yeah. But I, I mean, at, like access to like clubhouse locker rooms. Um, we have that. But they, I mean, we don't we don't play. They don't really have a locker, locker rooms. rooms. I mean, some do. I mean, when I when I have the opportunity to play at a like a private club, which is not often, but I, I'm gonna go check out the bathroom every time yeah. because there's usually. I mean, they usually have like complimentary fucking deodorant sticks, <laughs> toothbrushes, <laughs> yeah. like aftershave. I don't need aftershave, but I'll take one. Um, great spot to take a piss at the turn. Yeah. I did actually steal it to a thing of pit stick at Miles' country club. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, nice. And you're not stealing it because it's complimentary for True. the people playing. Miles paid for it. Sure. It was his membership. Yeah. His, his guests get amenities too. Thank you, Miles. Thanks, Miles. Um, I got mm-hmm. one more. What probably the biggest advantage that professional golfers have over us amateur golfers is permission to play whenever they want from their wives. <laughs> their wives, if they want to golf four days a week, which they often do, no flack from the wife whatsoever. I mean, every day of the week. Yeah. I mean, well, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, Monday through Thursday. Yeah, they're probably and then they're, tournaments Thursday to Sunday. Yeah, they're probably taking Mondays off, right? Monday, then, Tuesdays, yeah. I mean, Mondays or Tuesdays are taking them off, right? And they do a practice round Wednesday and then five days in a row they're golfing which is sick. if i try to pull that shit and you could golf 36 they, you, i mean you can play as many holes as you yeah. want yeah yeah i just had to get the driver figured Matt, out i had 36 holes today i'm gonna try that this summer i'm gonna tell my wife like hey yeah i'm playing wednesday and then uh, again thursday and then i got a tea time friday morning um and then saturday and sunday i think we're gonna play a couple rounds too and just see what she says work related yep so your nine to five is just hitting the course. Yep. Yes. Like, literally. Like, yeah. How sick is that? That never, they can just play golf whenever they want, however long they want and catch no flack from anyone. It's the best. Do you, how often do you think pros play with their buddies for fun? Um, only when they don't make cuts. I, I think, so it depend on the, the talent level of the golfer. Mm-hmm. But like think about like Max Homa, he went and played in that. Well, there was a tournament that ended on a Saturday, and okay. then that Sunday he went and played in his like local club tournament. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So I think like most of the golfers are only playing with their buddies if they like miss the cut or something, or if they hit that burnout stage where they're just like, I need, I yeah. just need a break. If yep. they played really shitty or whatever. Um, I mean, that's. I feel like that's a disadvantage, is because now because it is your job, you don't have the opportunity to play with your buddies like you did growing up. Which yeah. I'm sure are some of their best memories. But like, think about like Spieth and JT. They just are buddies. So like, they can just they get to play golf with their buddies every week. You know what would have been the best? You, do you guys remember in Full Swing um, when they're like showing pictures of was it Ricky's bachelor party mm-hmm. or Jordan Spieth's bachelor party? Or, I think it was Ricky's. Where they just like the boys went out and just fucked around on the golf course for, barefooted. Yeah, four of the best golfers on the planet. This is acting like hooligans. It was great. I would have paid unlimited amount of money to be able to join that bachelor party. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been unbelievable. Yeah, it's the right group of party level too. Like John Daly comes to your bachelor party, it's going to get real dark real fast, I think, yes. trying to keep up with him. But those guys are like the right amount of party level for a bachelor party where it's going to be really fun. You're going to do some dumb shit. But no one's gonna be dead the next day. No one's liver is gonna fall out the next day. Yeah, imagine being like Ricky's childhood friend and maybe like haven't seen him for a while. But you yeah. invite to the bachelor party yep. with again the best golfers in the world. That would be a weekend I would want to never end. I would, my goal would to be 
get those guys so drunk that I beat them on a hole. Just one hole. That's just it. one that's hole. I mean, I know we've got to be realistic yeah. about it. And then you have you got a story to tell. Yeah. For the rest of your life. Fuck, that's awesome. Uh, you guys got any more? Mm, not really. All right. Pretty okay. That's a wrap, I suppose. 187. Mm-hmm. 187 in the books. We'll be back next week. Love you guys. Love you. Love you. Hey, you pipe that the wrong f- way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book in another 18 for tomorrow. So. Okay, they cheated on that. They fucked their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. <laughs>